Nope. Okay. Sorry that other video starting this assignment uh, got cut off a little bit. I was using, I was using the book and the program uh, had, a, had a minute limit and I went to 15 minutes. So caught me uh, mid cent mid cent I was trying to finish that. Anyway, let's go over these answers. All right. Hopefully you were able to get help from your teacher if you needed help. And uh, let's see what we got here. Remember this first problem, uh, the, the frog jumps uh, seven times calls them super jumps, and then three more feet on the last jump wasn't a super jump, and they, that was a total of 59 feet. So we figured out there was seven J's, J's. Uh, we said J is a super jump, uh, plus the three is 59, which means if you take away that three, uh, you got 56 for all these J's. And if seven of these J's, J's. these super jumps, uh, make, 50, make 50 feet, how much is each super jump? Well, they're all the same amount each. Uh, you can't have one super jump be, be 10 feet and the other be five, right? They're they're the same. That's why they they have the same variable. And seven times what is 56? Well, seven times what is 56? Seven times eight equals 56. You've been practicing those facts? So a super jump, one super jump, and I'm going to put in parentheses the CJ equals eight feet. And let's just double check. Seven times eight is 86 plus that last three, 59. Cool. All right. Um, now, they said uh, to write an expression uh, using X, and we kind of already did this. Uh, uh, 7 times x, x plus 3 equals 59. Okay, 7 of these jumps plus 3 more feet equals 59. And that's how you would have done that. Now, th if you're confused on this, hang in there, rewind it, watch it again, um, and hang in there. Okay, uh, when we first start using variables, it can be confusing. But remember what a variable is doing. It's just representing a number. A number. We don't know what the number is yet. Okay. But we're going to use that to, to sort of uh, make our make equation or express expression. Okay. All right. 4-8, uh, we're talking about uh, three of these super high jumps uh, plus five more feet was the same as two of these super high jumps plus six feet. Well, geez. Um, Two of them plus six, three of them plus, hmm. Sounds to me like these super high jumps are going real high, but not that far, right? Because I I took away one and I only had to add one here, right? Took away one of these one of these jumps and only had to add one more foot to get the same distance. So I'm thinking these X's are only one foot each, okay? So if that's a one, that's a one, that's a one, and five, that total would be eight, eight, right? One plus one plus one plus five, that total is gonna be eight. And if this is one plus one plus six, what's that, what's that equal? That also equals eight. So these super high jumps must be going really high, but not that far, only going one foot each, right? Right? So that's kind of, that's kind of what we're here. Let's just double check we answered the question. Always do that. How far does Crokey travel in one super high jump? Well, we said it's one foot, right? And how do we know? Well, we kind of I explained it. You might write it down an explanation for me. That would be great. How long? How long? Is super high jump routine. Whole routine is going to be eight feet. Okay. And you're going to explain how you know. All right, simplify. Simplify. We already decided one plus twelve point six five. That ends up being thirteen point six five for the answer to that. Two hundred twelve minus one hundred two, or two hundred twelve plus negative two hundred twelve plus negative. So that's going to be negative a total of three hundred and fourteen on D. B, I said to put these together first. I have 6.5, 10.5, that's 16, and 2.5s as a whole. So 17 plus negative 2. I have 17 plus I owe 2. 
that's going to be a total of 15. I said to do this first, and we did. And 4 times 95 is almost, is almost 4. How much less is it? 4 times negative 5. 4 times 20. So 400 minus 20 is 380. Another way of looking at that is 490 four is 360. And 4, 5, five is 20. And that's 380. All right. Uh, I said to do this first and this first on E. So 6 times 3 is 20, or sorry, 18. So 4 plus 18 plus 2 times, I got to do this parentheses, 5 and a half minus 1 is 4 and a half. And I got to go 2 times that. Well, 2 fours is 8, 2 halves is 1 whole, so that's 9. 4 plus 18 plus 9. That's 22 and 9, 9, 31 for the E. So all we really have to do is this last one, F, which was which 5 times, times, sorry, 5 plus 3 times 5 minus 4 times 5. Remember, if there's nothing written between the parentheses and that number, then you're multiplying. So this is 5 plus 3 times 5 is 15, minus 4 times 5 is 20. So 5 plus 15 is 20, 20 minus 20. Oh, oh, they did it to us. We got a donut for breakfast, a big fat zero. All right, what do we got here? 4-10, finish, finish dividing. 4 goes into 28 seven times. That's a nice even. And I bring down that next number. I got a 3, 3, fit into 3. So now I can keep dividing, or I can say my remainder goes on top. 3, divisor on the bottom. 170 and 3 fourths. Or I can add it, add it down, and bring it uh, uh, up, and add a 0, bring it down. Now, 4 goes into 30 seven times. That's 28. Add another 0, and 4 goes into 25 times. So 170.775, which equals 170 and 3 fourths. All right, 75 cents, 5 cents, 3 dollars. Okay, now I go here. Now 2 went into 21, or 9 went into 21 twice, and that's 18. Okay, now 9 goes into 32 three times. That's 27. Now on this one, because I know that's a 9 is a multiple of 3, I'm not going to add a decimal because I'm going to get a repeating decimal when I do that. Okay, and you can try it and find out. I'm just going to write this as a fraction. 5, 5 25 ninths, 23 remainder 5, 23. And like I say, if you divide that, you're going to get a repeating decimal. All right? All right, all right. 4-11, I have to rewrite these. Uh, Decimals as fractions and fractions as decimals. We already did the first one. On B, I got 0 0.103. What is that? That's 103. Put zeros underneath each of them and then a 1. So 103 three thousandths. Okay. C, I have a decimal 1 and 21 hundredths. Okay, okay, and I simplify any of these. D, uh, as soon as I said it, 505 well, well, I'm not going to simplify that because my job is to write this as a decimal. 500 thousandths is 505 thousandths. And again, I could divide the bottom into the top, but when you divide by 1,000, you just move the decimal three spots, three zeros. So 505 boom 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 three spots right now you can go divide and prove and prove that but you could trust me too 505 hundredths that's going to be five and five hundredths right five hundred hundredths is five but let's go ahead and divide the bottom into the top 100 goes into 505 five times I'm going to add a decimal, bring it up, add a zero, bring it down. 100 goes into 50, zero times. Add another zero, bring it down, and 100 goes into 500. So 5.05, 5.05, 5 
is D or E. And the last one, F, two hundred thousandths. Which they say, give me a two hundred thousandths. Now, I'm going to rewrite this and show you something. I'm going to put that two underneath that last zero. Now, how many more zeros I have? I have four more zeros. Okay. Now, if I put a zero, a zero there, there, a zero there, a zero there, it tells me where my decimal is going to go. One, two, three, four, then a two. Okay. And again, this is tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, two hundred thousandths. All right, that's all she wrote. Hopefully you did well. Ask your teachers if anything is confusing. We will talk to you soon.